Okay, today I am going to work through the study guide for Unit 1B, which means it's the second half of the first unit for our test. Uh, I'm not going to read this problem again because I hope that you have all already read it, but I will briefly go over this graph. Okay, on our x-axis we have our time and hours. Our scale is from 1 to 10. On the y-axis we have our distance from home in hours. So she's going on a journey from home to co uh, going home from college. College is 300 miles away. So she starts driving, okay? And after two hours, then she stops and what is she at a friend's house and has dinner. She makes a wrong turn, so she ends up going further away from home. Then she figures out that she needs to go the right way, so she starts driving towards home again. She gets pulled over by the police. And that delays her for an hour, and then she ends up on the road back home. Okay? So, we have how many pieces in this function? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So when I have to write this function, okay, then I'm going to go down and write each of those. So I start off with write d of t equals big old brace. Those are actually called braces, okay. Um, and my first one, okay, I have to find the slope, okay. And the slope for my first one is that I have traveled from 300 from home to 200 from home, which means that I have gone, it's negative because we're going down, so negative 100 miles over a course of two hours. So my rate, my average speed is negative 50 miles an hour. Um, I do not go through zero, zero, so I have to pick a point, whichever one you want to, okay, I'm gonna pick this point which is 0, 300. Okay, and I'm going to use, uh, I'll write it right here so we can look at it, y equals m times x minus h plus k. That is our general point slope form that we've been using all year. So, in this particular first one, my slope is negative 50, parentheses, t minus 0 plus 300. Now, you can simplify that if you want to. Um, or not, okay? Um, I'm telling you, you don't have to, just to get things, make it easier for you. Okay, now this first piece goes from 0, okay, to 2. And the second piece goes from 2 to 4. And the next piece goes from 4 to 5. And the next piece is going from 5 to 7. And the next piece is going from 7 to 8. And the last piece goes from 8 to 10. Okay, so those numbers, and I tried to color code them each time. Okay, those are the numbers that are going to surround your variable each time. So on that first piece, I'm going from T between 0 and 2. All right, now this second piece, okay, we've talked about that. It is a constant. It never changes, so there's no variable in our answer. We just figure out what the y value is at that point, and the y value is 200. So that one's going to be 200, and that is when t is in between 2 and a circle 4 is the other side of that one. Okay? Then I'm going to go to the third piece, and the third piece goes between 4 and 5, so if you want to go ahead and put that. Um, some people want to go ahead and put it all at the beginning, that's fine also, but I'm color coding it, so it makes it a little easier to wait. So my slope is that I go up 50, because I am going up this time, and the time, speed, time difference is just 1, from 4 to 5 is 1. So my speed this time is 50. It does not go through 0, 0, so i got to pick a point. Which point? Okay. Some people, let's go use that one. So that's 4, 200. 
So that means 50 T minus 4 plus 200. All right, let's go to the next piece. The next piece is my red, which is going between 5 and 7. So T is between 5 and 7. And hold on one second. Okay, so our T value goes between 5 and 7. And I need to go find that slope between 5 and 7. So this time, my slope, uh, I am going down 150. And I have, that's over a course of two hours. So this time my slope, or my rate, is driving quite fast at negative 75 uh, miles per hour. And it's negative because our distance from home is getting smaller as we get closer to home. Um, and so pick a point. Uh, we'll pick this one here, that's fine. Uh, that is the point uh, 5, comma, 250. So that's what I'm going to put in for my H and K. So that's T minus 5 plus 250. I'll make sure that's what I put in there. 5250. All right, that works. All right, so my next piece, 5, is going between 7 and 8. Okay, so T is going between 7 and 8. And I look at it, and it's flat. It's constant. And I go across and find out that that's 100. And then, that's all. Again, it's flat. It doesn't change. There's no variable in it. And then my last piece is going between 8 and 10. And we got to go calculate that slope. So that slope is down 100 over a course of 2 hours, which is negative 50. So again, I have negative 50 and I need a point. And again, you can choose any point you want to. If you want to choose 10, 0 or 8, 100, which is big 8, 100, then that's going to be T minus 8 plus 100. Okay, so those are the points on my graph. Uh, my function, my piecewise function, that describes my graph because I had six pieces to this function. It says interpret the point 10, 0 in the context of the problem. So in the context of the problem, this is the time and this is the distance. So that means after 10 hours, prudence, is zero miles from home. Or you could say prudence is home after 10 hours of traveling. Whichever one, you got the same, you got the idea. Okay, on the next one, determine D of 4.5 and explain the meaning. So if I'm trying to find D of 4.5, this is T. So I gotta go figure out where is 4.5, and 4.5 is in between four and five, okay? And if it's harder for you to look at the equation, then go back up here and find 4.5 on your graph and that's in the third piece. So then you go back down and find out that that's our third piece. So um, that means that I'm gonna plug in that for T. So that means 50 times 4.5, yikes, 4.5 minus four plus 200. And I encourage you all to, um, when you do this, put it in your calculator in one fell swoop, right there. Okay? And when you do, you will find out that your answer is 225. And so to explain the meaning of that answer, similar to what we did here, after 4.5 hours, prudence, is still is 225 miles from home. Okay? 
And then the next one, this one says determine the value of t. Okay, so I am looking for t. That means don't go plug this in for t. When d of t is equal to 150, so when the distance is 150, okay, and you can't really tell that from here. I don't know if y'all can or not, but go back up to the graph and go find 150, okay? And what piece does it fall into? It falls into the fourth piece of my graph. All right, let me pause there one second. Okay, so we were looking <laughs> there goes the bell. We were looking for where um, our mileage was going to be 150 miles. And so when we went back up in a probably found 150 miles and it's in this section, which is the red section or section number four if you don't have colors, okay? And as I did the example in class, that means that this is on this side of the equation. So, oh, I was going to do, um, it's the green part. So, 150 is equal to that red section. So that's negative 75 t minus 5 plus 250. So when I solve that, I'm going to subtract 250, which is going to give me negative 100, equals negative 75 t plus, what's 75 times 5? 75 times 5 is 375. So now I have to subtract 375, and I'm going to get negative 75 t equals negative 475 and I divide both sides by negative 75 and I'm going to find out that t is equal to 6.3 repeating. So the answer to my question is about 6 point is 6.3 repeating. To explain that, that means when prudence is 150 miles from home she has been traveling for <laughs> approximately 6.3 hours okay I'm gonna pause there and then I will continue on page 2 which is inequalities Okay, so to continue, we're going to solve our inequalities and absolute value inequalities. Solve and graph where indicated. Um, indicated meaning if we, obviously, if we see a number line at the bottom of the problem, then we know that we're going to, um, we're going to graph it. Okay. So, to solve number four, we are first going to add one to both sides. For the room, I'm not going to um, actually write that step. So this is negative 4x, negative 9, plus 1 is negative 8. I divide, and remember, when you write down, the number that you're dividing by is a negative number. you got to remember to flip that inequality. So that means that x is less than negative 8 divided by negative 4 is 2, or subtracting 7, negative x, 1 minus 7 is negative 6. And again, got to get rid of that negative because we have to solve for x and I have to flip that sign so x is less than 6. Okay, um, normally an or, one ray goes one way and run one ray goes the other way, but our um, inequalities are facing the same way. So if you think about it on a number line, you've got to figure out which numbers satisfy both, no, 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 not both, either condition. So the numbers that are less than 2 or less than 6 are actually going to start here and go this way. Remember to put your arrows on your inequalities. Okay, if you think about this again, okay, this is those numbers less than 2 and this is those numbers less than 6. So if I need a number that's either less than that or less than that, then basically I can, then it can be an either or of these solutions. So that means this would include all of them. Okay, 
Moving on, so subtract 6 from both sides. x is less than 10 minus 6, which is 4. And divide by 2. Uh, x is greater than negative 1. Okay. Um, I have an and statement. My inequalities are going different ways. So in this case, I've got negative 1 and I have 4. Uh, zeros on there. I always like for y'all to put that. Put a circle on each one and less than 4 and greater than negative 1 means I'm going to be shading in between. Oh, I should box. So this goes along with this answer and this would be the answer to this one. You wouldn't write both of them because that is extra uh, redundant. You don't need to write them both. You need to know which one is the answer. Okay, moving along. Divide by negative 2. I'm dividing by negative 2, that negative number, so x is less than or equal to, let me move that down, okay. x is less than or equal to negative 5, and I'm going to add 2, so 3x is less than or equal to 12. I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and x is less than or equal to 4. So I have another one of these AND statements, just like this OR statement, but they're both going the same way. So when I put on negative 5 and 4, 0 somewhere in the middle. So if you think about negative 5 is this, 4 is this, okay? And when you graph these, and if it's an AND statement, then I have to find those points that satisfy both conditions. And the points that satisfy both conditions are those points. So my answer is going to be, put a circle on the 5, close it in because it says equals, and shade to the left. Oopsie. Okay. And I'll only box that because that's the only part of the answer. Okay. Now, these next problems, y'all, have inequalities, and that should clue you in that there's something different about them. They're not like any other problem, exactly like the same things that we've done before, okay? It is an absolute value inequality. The solution is to one, two, or zero points, um, so we're not going to have you graph them. But as we have talked about before, let me write it right here absolute value of x equals a. The only way to get rid of that absolute value is to say that x equals a or x equals negative a. Okay? Or negative x equals a. Either way, well, we're going to say x equals a. So that means that we say this inside has to equal what we see or this inside equals the opposite of what we see. Okay? So, solving this, if I subtract x from both sides, because you usually want to collect your variables first, I have negative 5 equals x minus 7, and I'm going to add 7 to both sides, and I find out that x equals negative 2. Or, x minus 5, I have to distribute that negative. So that's negative 2x plus 7. I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So 3x minus 5 equals 7. I'm going to add 5. I'm running out of room. So I got 3x equals 12. Divide by 3. And x equals 4. Okay? And as I mentioned in class, once you have absolute value, especially with the equals, you need to make sure to check your answers. Okay, so to check this, okay, you always plug it into the original equation. So one of mine is going to look like this. Um, negative 2 minus 5, does that equal 2 times negative 2 minus 7? Well, negative 2 minus 5 is the absolute value of negative 7. And negative 2, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11. Uh, those don't check 
they're not equal to each other. Okay, let's go check this one. So this gives me absolute value of 4 minus 5. Does that equal to, actually, and so that means I, I'm going to cross that out. Uh, oh, y'all, there's the problem. I'll see real quick. Okay, this plus 7, that's supposed to be plus 7, which means that's positive 2, which means when I'm checking it, this is positive 2, and that's positive 2. Uh, let me just erase that and do that again. So x equals 2. Let's check it. So if x equals 2, then the absolute value of 2 minus 5 is equal to the absolute value of 2 times 2 minus 7. Well, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Absolute value of negative 3, does that equal 4 minus 7? Negative 3, that's positive 3, this is negative 3, so they're not equal. Okay? Alright, checking this one. I'm going to have um, 4, I'm plugging 4 into the original equation. So 4 minus 5 is equal to 2 times 4 minus 7. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. This absolute value of negative 1 equal 8 minus 7, which is 1, and that one is true. So that means that x equals 4 is my only answer, and that one does not check. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so moving on to number 6. Again, before you ever do anything to your absolute value, and before you apply this definition, you got to isolate that absolute value. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. And when I do that, I find out that x plus 4 is equal to negative 2. That's the minimal amount of work you got to show me if you want to write in the answer blank that it's no solution because the absolute value cannot be equal to a negative number. All right, again, isolate the absolute value. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 5. So 3 times the quantity, absolute value of 2x minus 1 equals subtract 5. 20 minus 5 is 15. Then I'm going to divide by 3. So the absolute value of 2x minus 1 equals 5. Okay, so now I'm back to isolating the absolute value. So I have 2x minus 1 equals 5 or 2x minus 1 equals negative 5. So you don't, you always should have some line in your problem, y'all, when you're dealing with absolute value, where you have absolute, uh, excuse me, isolated the absolute value. So this one was already isolated. Here I isolated it right there, and here I've isolated it there. So you shouldn't ever jump from not having any absolute values when you haven't had, when you haven't isolated the absolute value by itself. Okay? Again. Okay, so add one. 2x equals 6, divide by 2, x equals 3. Or, 2x minus 1, so add 1, 2x equals negative 5, plus 1 is negative 4, and x equals negative 2. Okay? Again, let's go check. Okay? So to check these two, then I have 3 times... 2 times 3 minus 1 plus 5, does that equal 20? So that's 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. Absolute value of 5 is 5. 3 times 5 is 15 plus 5 is 20. So that one checks. And I would encourage you to put that whole line in your calculator just like that. Okay? So in the next one I have 3 absolute value of 2 times negative 2 minus 1 plus 5, does that equal 20? So that's negative 4. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is 5. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 5 is 20. So in this case, they're both checked. Okay, absolute value inequalities. Again, okay, still dealing with absolute value, still need to isolate the absolute value before you do anything to get rid of it. So I'm going to subtract 
4. So that's 2x minus 1. Absolute value of that is greater than or equal to 9 minus 5, which is 4. Okay, so I'm here at that point where I have the absolute value high, uh, isolated. Okay, and at this point, y'all, I would encourage you, greater than is an OR statement, which means that I should have two rays when I finish. Two rays, of course, we could have, well, at this point, you would know, all real numbers are no solution. So, from here, it's an OR statement, so that means I write it as is without the absolute value, or I write what I have on the inside. I have to flip it and change it to negative. So I'm going to solve. I'll move on down the page here. Okay, so add 1, 2x is greater than or equal to 5, divide by 2, x is greater than or equal to 5 halves. Or add 1, 2x is less than or equal to negative 3, and that means divide by 2, x is less than or equal to negative 3 halves. Now, I divided by 2 in both cases, y'all, neither one was negative, which is why I didn't have to flip it, okay? So, you can see negative 3 halves, 0, 5 halves, okay? And if it's greater than 5 halves, I'm going to shade this way, which is what we thought we were going to do when we kind of just summarized the problem up here. Okay, again, make sure you draw your arrows. It's equal to, so I am going to fill that in. Less than negative 3 halves goes this way. Draw your arrow. Fill in your circle. And we're done with that one. Okay. Absolute value is isolated. Okay, so I'm going and highlighting every time because, I, as I said, that, that point should be evident on every problem. The absolute value is less than a negative number. Is that possible? It is not possible. So, there is nothing. That's fine. And I would accept there's no work you have to show because it's already isolated. It's If it's not isolated, then you have to do that first before you make that decision. Okay. So we have, uh, oops, um, all right, absolute value of x minus 1 is plus 6 is less than or equal to 14. So, got to isolate it, so I'm going to subtract 6. Absolute value of x minus 1 is less than or equal to 8. Okay, so here I'm at the point where it is isolated all by itself. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to step back and I'm going to say that's an AND statement. So generally it should be a segment. Okay, and we're going to follow through and see what happens. AND is when you can write it as a compact inequality. You always write it as is. In this case, flipping the sign just means I get to put it in front. But i got to make it negative in the front. So when you write it as is and then you flip it and make it negative, this doesn't seem like we're flipping it because we're writing it on the other side. So I add 1 to solve it. Negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. And 8 plus 1 is 9. So my um, point is negative 7, 0, 9. Draw a circle on each. Do I color them in? I do because it's equal sign. And I shade in between because those are the numbers that are between. And back over here, uh, if you want to put a mark on there and zero so that you know that I know that you that there's nothing to shade because it's no solution. That's great. All right, moving along to our next section of exploring inequalities. Uh, mixed emotions on these. Some people could get the inequality. Some people still have trouble with graphing. Okay, but let's go on. Okay, this key right here is enough to tell you that it's a quadratic. It's positive, so I know that it's a U-shape and it's going up. And those are when we used our key points, 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 9. But first, so it's normally doing this, okay? But I, this tells me that I move to the left, and this tells me that I move down. So... If I move to the left 3, 1, 2, 3, and down 4, then I'm right here. 
Okay, that finds your starting point. Then we'll use our over and up, which means I go over one, up one in both directions. If I go over two, I go up four in both directions. Oops, that wasn't four on that side. This is four. Uh, if I go over three, then I go up nine, which is going to be right here and right there. Okay, less than means that my line is going to be dotted. So when you connect them, you do need to um, fill up the graph. So some of y'all cut it short, acting like the parabola doesn't go on forever and ever. It does go on forever and ever. Okay, so we have arrows on it. Now I got to figure out where to shade. Okay, why is less than this thing? So we've talked about you go to your y-intercept and less than is going to be down. So in this case, um, I will shade down below. Uh, you, you shouldn't cross over your um, line like I just did. Y'all are better at uh, coloring. So we've shaded all of this. And then I think there are some people um, that don't know what to do once we've done this part. Okay, but once we've done this part, let y equal 0 solve for x, this is the part that we did um, with the um, with our number line. Okay, and now, so the point is you've got to know where they cross the x-axis because this point right here on the x-axis, uh oh, don't do that to me. Let me get a little bit. Okay, that's my x-axis that way, and this is my x-axis that way. Okay, that's the answer, y'all. So just like we've been doing when we had a problem like this and you write the answer, so I'm going to write the answer and say, well, that number is negative 5, so x is less than negative 5, or x is greater than negative 1. So that's your answer. Okay, let y equal to 0. So this time we're going to graph an absolute value. Same thing, this says... Um, this says that we're going to go left, and this says we're going to go up, and that's our starting point. So I'm going to go left 2 and up 6. So hopefully y'all can realize that's hard to make it go up, so this right here is telling you that it goes down. And our slope, what we've talked about, okay, is plus or minus 1, so you're going to go over one, down one, over one, down one, wherever to fill up your graph and keep going, and then over one, down one, over one, down one, and connecting, boom, 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 I think I'm here, we'll find out, and connect a nice straight line, I gotta pause, be right back.